Thank you. Thank you very much for inviting us to speak today. Um, so, yes, I'm here to speak about a project um, that ha we have been running over the last three years uh, at Barnsley Football Club. I'm here from Reds in the Community. Reds in the Community is the charitable arm of the football club. Um, and I just wanted to start off with um, a photograph that hopefully sums up really uh, what I'm going to be talking about for the next 20 minutes, which is um, that our project has very much been a team effort. Um, and this is a, an image from, as we were concluding the project, uh, many of the volunteers, contrib contributors, partner organisations, learning providers and supporters involved in the project celebrating the opening of the heritage displays that were um, kind of a, a key output of the project that um, we've been working on. Um, our project was supported by the National Lottery Heritage Fund and also by the South West Yorkshire, this is a bit of a uh, mouthful, South West Yorkshire Partnership NHS Foundation Trust uh, Creative Minds Initiative um, and we were um, pleased uh, to have the support of both of those funders uh, to enable us to celebrate the heritage of Barnsley Football Club over the last three years. Um, so yes, as I say, Reds in the Community is a registered charity delivering community and charitable activities on behalf of Barnsley Football Club and we celebrated the club's 130th anniversary by involving supporters and the wider community in exploring and telling the story of Barnsley FC and its home ground, Oakwell. Um, so you can see with the images here, um, we started off the project by very much wanting to speak to uh, supporters and uh, local community members about how they valued um, the heritage of the, the football club. Obviously for an institution to last for 130 years, that doesn't happen by accident. It happens because people are um, getting involved, being a part of that institution. Um, and when we spoke to people about how they wanted to, um, how they wanted to celebrate the, the 130th anniversary of the club, uh, our supporters highlighted the living nature of the heritage of the football club. Um, so it was very much about that intangible, the stories, the experiences, the memories that people held and hold in relation to the football club. Um, local people and supporters called for the story of Barnsley Football Club to be told through players, managers and supporters' stories. They wanted to hear about um, everybody's experiences of coming together through Barnsley Football Club. Um, and one of the things we found when we undertook the research and the consultation that, we, um, that was necessary, obviously, to develop the project and to develop our funding applications, um, people spoke about these values that they felt were a part of the football club. So they talked about togetherness and how the football club enabled people to come together. They talked about community, family. People talked about, as Bridget had, uh, spoke about earlier in relation to rugby league, how... Um, how they'd been brought along to Barnsley Football Club by parents or grandparents and they'd caught that bug and now they were bringing their children, their grandchildren and that family connection and that community connection was such an important part of the club for the people that we spoke to and that was something they really wanted to reflect in any project that we were to undertake to celebrate this 130 years. People also spoke about hard work or graft um, as, as, um, as we often talk about, uh, talk about it in, in, in Barnsley, which again, uh, another former coal mining community. Um, so graft was a really important word that came out of our research. Teamwork, obviously, community teamwork, and also resilience. Um, you know, following the, the demise of the coal mining industry, that's a, a word that, that does mean um, quite a lot to, to many of the, the people that we spoke to in developing our project. Um, so we developed our project aims which were to enrich visitors' understanding of the heritage of Barnsley Football Club and its Oakwell Stadium and also to engage people across the borough enabling them to contribute their memories and experiences. Um, so from that obviously we um, submitted our funding applications and were successful in um, achieving funding to support a project um, exploring this heritage and um, through that we were able to involve people in uh, our project to explore and share the heritage of the football club. 
So some of the pictures that you can see there, um, this one here, we've got volunteers taking part in oral history training. So as, as I said, one of the key areas that people wanted to explore were people's stories. So we started off with oral history training with Professor Stephen Kelly, who had um, uh, undertaken similar oral history projects in relation to Liverpool Football Club. And so it was fantastic to secure his expertise and our volunteers very much enjoyed hearing from Stephen. And one of the things that Stephen talked about was the importance of um, capturing stories, going back as far as we possibly could, um, you know, obviously from speaking to people of all different ages across uh, the Barnsley Borough. Um, and from, from undertaking that training, uh, supporters were, our volunteers were able to get involved in interviewing other supporters and also interviewing um, former players, managers and so on. Um, so as I say, the Our Club, Our Ground, Our Past, Our Future project, which actually I ought to just say, um, the title itself is part of this idea of, it is very much our club, it's a, it's a community uh, asset, it's an institution that the community have supported over all of these years and in fact from our uh, consultation um, one of the, one of the um, aspects of consultation we undertook was speaking to people at our annual open day and um, one of the supporters there was talking very much about you know this should be about people's stories, it is our club, it's our ground, it's our past and I said to him, I think you've just titled our project. Um, you know, it, 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 that's exactly the, the aim of the project is um, enabling people to feel a part of that story because it is, at the end of the day, all of those people who've contributed to the club are part of that story. Um, so volunteers, we, we held a volunteer um, day actually on National Sporting Heritage Day uh, in 2016. And um, we, were, we had a, a range of people come forward wanting to get involved as volunteers in the project, volunteers of all ages, and they've been getting involved in a range of tasks from interviewing players, staff and supporters, past and present, to also undertaking research and digitally co collecting photographs, documents and stories. Um, we didn't collect actual artefacts, obviously, because um, we are a football club. We are, a, you know, it was the living heritage that people were uh, keen to uh, explore as part of this project um, and so we, we concentrated on um, that kind of digital um, collecting of photographs, scanning documents and obviously collecting oral histories. Uh, some images here, the, one of our volunteers there interviewing um, Bruce Dyer, one of our former um, players and then here Arthur, another of our volunteers interviewing um, Neil Redfern. We've got young volunteers, so as well as our regular volunteers who stayed with us throughout the project, we also had um, young volunteers who were involved in the National Citizen Service um, project, and they got involved in also collecting uh, memor digitally memorabilia and so on, and speaking, as you can see there, to support us about some of the memories and photographs that they had. And here are a couple of our other regular volunteers digitising and catalog cataloguing old photographs and documents. So the initial stage of the project really throughout the club's 130th year was actually collecting um, you know, stories, memories. We also set up a, uh, a web page that people could actually uh, contribute their memories online uh, of, of supporting the football club um, so that we were able to, to bring those stories together uh, in celebration of this, this 130 year history. Uh, we worked with a local video production company, Deadline Digital, to create a number of short films in which players, managers and supporters spoke about their memories of the club and our volunteers very much enjoyed having the opportunity to speak to legends um, you know, in person, um, Ronnie Glavin there, uh, Mark Roberts and Adam Hamill and Eric Wynne Stanley, so footballers from across different um, periods of the club's history that were able to speak about their experiences. Um, with Barnsley Football Club. Um, we worked with the South West, as I say, worked with the South West Yorkshire Partnership NHS Foundation Trust Creative Minds Initiative on the sharing memories of Barnsley FC aspect of the project. And through that, reminiscence activities took place within NHS and other settings, enabling participants to explore and share their um, Barnsley FC related memories. Um, so we went out to local care homes, we went out to um, sheltered housing, uh, 
Um, we invited people along to the ground to undertake um, activities where we you know, brought along um, digital photos, as you can see there, and artifacts for them to be able to um, capture some of those memories. Um, and what was important as part of that work, we'd spoken, obviously, in, as part of our consultation with Age UK uh, and also with the Alzheimer's Society, and um, Age UK in particular, they'd had a report that had come out that had talked about the importance of um, people being able to make a contribution throughout their lives um, and to be able to have a purpose. Um, and this was very much about um, collecting memories, but with a purpose in that we wanted those memories to be uh, something that supporters, you know, future supporters could actually learn from and could understand more about how the football club uh, had developed and all of the people that had been a part of that story. Um, we developed, at the beginning of the project, a project advisory group, um, and that included our club historian, who's a volunteer, uh, David Wood, and also members of the Supporters Trust and other interested supporters. And that um, group, you can see there, uh, that's just from one of our many, many meetings. So we had lots of meetings where the project advisory group were able to look at um, how they wanted the project to develop, the ways in which they wanted to see um, our interpretation, uh, within the stadium develop and we went on um, case study visits so this was one of the visits that we undertook um, to the Manchester City football ground to look at how they had um, developed interpretation within their stadium so that we could learn from other uh, from examples elsewhere how we wanted to develop our own interpretation for, for Barnsley Football Club um, so it was fantastic to have uh, supporters fans getting involved as volunteers in actually steering this project and um, having that opportunity really to, to input into the project which is uh, as I say it was very much about the our um, you know our club our ground uh, we worked with the Manchester based design company the office of Craig um, they were appointed by Reds in the community to work on the design and production of the heritage displays so as I said, we spent the whole of the um, 130th year actually collecting material and then um, through working with the Office of Craig, we were able to um, utilise the material that we'd gathered to develop displays for within uh, the ground. And again, going back to that consultation that we'd done in very early stages of the project, uh, supporters had been keen that... Uh, any interpretation that we develop should be in the stadium, it should be around the stadium where they continue that heritage, that is a living heritage, they come to the match every week and it should be a part of that, uh, that intangible, uh, ongoing living heritage. Um, so it was very much about de de developing displays that would be around the stadium so that when people came to the match they were able to dip into um, these stories of how the club had developed and other people's experiences of um, supporting or playing for or managing Barnsley Football Club. Um, so there's an image there of Craig um, talking through the displays as, he, as we opened them at the launch and also some of our project advisory group members he here um, looking at the displays at, at the launch um, which we held um, at the beginning of 2019. Um, so as I say, many of the, the volunteers and contributors and partner organisations and supporters involved with the project came together to launch the displays. Um, just some of the images here, Wayne Bullymore, that's Chief Executive of Reds in the Community who originally um, developed the idea of having um, the Our Club, Our Ground, Our Past, Our Future project of you know, um, celebrating that 130 years. Uh, David Wood, our club historian, volunteer, and some of our regular vol volunteers that got involved with the project, and they spoke at the, the event about um, really what the, the project had meant to them. And I did just want to um, just read through, really, some of the, uh, the uh, speech that, that David Wood made, because I think it helps to, to make the point uh, about how this was very much a community effort. So at the launch event, David said, for the longest time, I would make em envious glances at other clubs. Like all Barnsley fans, I could see where things could be done around Oakwell and was always filled with questions like, 
why don't they acknowledge Tiverton Preedy, that's our club founder, somewhere? And wouldn't it be nice if they produced an area of the ground concerning our cup final victory? This was the case until the summer of 2016 when Reds in the Community started its heritage project. The first call was to reach out to like-minded souls, fans interested in the history of our club who would willingly volunteer their spare time to further the cause. A steering committee was formed to formulate how we wish to proceed and which topics would be covered. And now, look at all the people who have contributed to the success of this project. What great knowledge they have contributed. What great enthusiasm and positivity. We have created something truly positive and the legacy will be with us for many years to come. Slowly but surely, uh, the they that I'd anticipated has morphed into the we and now we have had the tools and manpower to bring our club, our ground and our past to the walls of Oakwell for our future generations. We have shown what we are capable of and I think that's a really important part of this project is that it was very much about the we. It was how we came together um, to develop the project. Um, so through the project, uh, Barnsley Football Club's heritage, as defined by supporters, that living heritage has been uncovered, recorded and interpreted by supporters, by volunteers at Barnsley Football Club's Oakwell Stadium. Supporters have contributed time, knowledge and skills, whilst also developing new skills and knowledge. And people have come together to explore a shared heritage, improving their quality of life and well-being. And to just give some examples of some of the um, feedback that we had from volunteers in relation to why they'd got involved and what they'd got out of it, um, just a few of the comments that we received. Things like, to be involved in a project which will be enjoyed by fans and members of the local community for many years to come. Feeling of contributing to a community project. Making loads of new friends. Gaining the confidence to talk to other people and make friends. Helping me to come to terms with semi-retirement. It's been something to look forward to every week. It's shown me how good volunteering work can be to get involved and make a difference. And then finally, um, Alan, one of our volunteers, when I see what we've achieved, it's just amazing. So it was very much about people coming together through a shared love of the club, um, just in the same way that so many people throughout the club's history have been a part of the club's story. Here are a, a group of people, volunteers, who've come together and again, part of the club story have brought together um, lots of stories, um, lots of images, they, you know, collecting uh, material from out in the community, both through reminiscence sessions, but also uh, through open days, going, uh, having um, sessions out in the community. And all of that material um, you know, has, has come together within our displays. Um, it was quite a tall order for the Office of Craig because we'd got so many stories that we wanted to tell. Um, one of the other things that um, the Project Advisory Group talked about is they didn't want it to be a museum because it's a stadium, it's a living heritage. So they wanted, some th they wanted our displays to be something that people could dip in and out of from one week to another because obviously it's there within the stadium. People might be stood at half-time with their pie and they wanted them to be able to kind of you know, one week perhaps dip into one area of the displays, another week dip into another area of the displays. That gave us um, an opportunity really to be able to include lots of material, lots of people's memories and stories. And so what we have actually developed is a timeline of memories. So within these displays, there are some of those key um, kind of facts, some of those key milestones uh, from throughout the project, uh, from, from throughout the club's history. Um, but actually, uh, the, the key part of the project is that those memories are actually featured within um, the timeline themselves so people can actually dip in from one week to the next and actually read um, the experiences of you know um, the lady that washed the kits in the 1950s the lady that lived on the street who used to chat to the footballers as they were walking up from the local coal mining communities to actually train um, so it's, it's a really nice way for people to be able to understand the history of the club, but not through a kind of factual um, approach. It's actually through the things that people have told us about what they remember uh, about these different periods in the club's history. Um, the project now um, is coming to a, a close, but obviously we've, we've um, involved 
uh, volunteers who are keen to, to continue. So I thought it would be good just to end with a few examples of how we are continuing uh, the work that has been started through the Our Club, Our Ground, Our Past, Our Future project. So we are, um, through a new col collaboration with Sporting Memories Network, which is a charity dedicated to sports reminiscence and physical activities, um, our volunteers are now setting up uh, a regular uh, group which will actually take place at Oakwell Stadium. So um, as well as having our outreach to different care homes, um, we'll actually have a regular group that will be taking place at the Oakwell Stadium. And we're quite fortunate at Oakwell, whilst we have had lots of stadium redevelopments, we do have um, one stand which is actually a stand that remains from uh, early in the 1900s, so it's seen a, a heck of a lot um, of heritage um, and history uh, whilst it's been standing. So the, that particular stand does act very much as a trigger when people come to the ground. It does act very much as a trigger for memories um, and we're, we're fortunate to, to have that. We've got new educational resources focusing on the history of the football club which have been developed by Brian Haywood <coughs> of Sports Inspire Educational Publishing. Um, and that enables local schools to be able to come and visit the ground and learn more about the, the history and the heritage of the, the club. Volunteers are continuing their work interviewing players, managers and supporters about their memories of Barnsley Football Club. Um, we've, we've, that's something that you know um, our volunteers have enjoyed and our supporters have enjoyed so much. The, the videos that we've got of our uh, legends being interviewed, I think we're up to about 50,000 views or something like that. Um, with the um, the interview so and lots of positive comments from uh, supporters about those videos so that's something that's continuing um, even though the, the sort of the initial project is, is coming to a close and um, supporters continue to enjoy viewing those interviews online we are also um, developing new web pages to enable us to uh, so that supporters can access the oral history interviews as well as being able to see some of those memories within the stadium they'll be able to access them online um, and so just to to finish just a couple of um, photographs um, showing our supporters just uh, just exactly as we envisage this idea of dipping in and out of different aspects of the uh, the displays from one week to the next um, you know half time um, cup of coffee or a cup of tea and a, a pie and dip into a particular aspect of um, the club's history and, and some of the memories that people have about that history. Um, so yeah, very much a, a, a team effort um, and it certainly is a case of it being our club, our ground, our past, our future. It's, it doesn't belong to one person, it, it belongs to all of us. Yeah, thank you.